Sacramento County is seeing a drastic increase in the number of homeless deaths. Now one homeless person dies every three days. The latest death was this afternoon near Richards Boulevard. That's where we find CBS 13's Macy Jenkins live tonight with the details. Macy. Well, Christina and Adrian, Sacramento police say they found that car just a few blocks from here. His death, a part of a growing number of homeless deaths the city and the county are trying to end. I don't think people wake up one day and just decide, like, I want to be homeless and I don't want anything out of life. An invisible problem in one of our most visible communities. In Sacramento County, one homeless person dies every three days. It's a sad story and um, we're committed to changing that. The latest Monday afternoon, a Sacramento man found inside of his car dead from natural causes. According to the Sacramento County Coroner's Office, in 2016, 78 homeless people died within the county. But in 2017, 124 died, an increase of more than 150 percent. It's a law. I was driving in my car and I smelled a number five with fries. Mm -hmm. Hadn't stopped for lunch, made me realize it was just my ride. Oh, no. But with the new Febreze car, I got it under control. The Real Talk Pod. Welcome in, guys. Welcome in. Welcome in. Thank you for listening. If you're on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Google, Play, all that. Even if you're outside homeless listening to this, which this is about homelessness today, uh, this is for you. And Sacramento is just, oh my gosh, if you guys can see, if you guys been out in Sacramento at least since 98, 99, 2000, 2001, and all that rent was basically i mean there wasn't there was homeless people out here but it wasn't now it's like double so i mean there was like a, a homeless program that feeds people hot meals called loaves and fishes and i go there still even when i'm living in a place because you get good service there there's good people there and you get to see really life for what it is on the uh, other side so basically um the tickets would go up to like 500 550 at the most now it's like they were, they were going up to 700, 800,000. So it's like double the homeless people. Sacramento, the economy has gotten terrible. I mean, it used to be 500, 450, even 375 for one bedroom. And now it's like 750, 850. You got to make three times the rent. No wonder why people are being homeless. What about for the people that work and they were trying to get a place and all of a sudden they couldn't get a place because they had to make three times the rent, but they don't make three times the rent or two and a half because their paycheck is only basically 30 to 40, 30 to 35 hours a week, not even a full 40. So how is, you know, people just fall off or um, they pick a wrong place to move. They move and then uh, they don't like that place. So they're trying to find another place and then they just fall into a bit of uh, homelessness. Some people are just giving up on life and just become homeless or they don't, they need help. I mean, they have, they're on, uh, not every single homeless person is on drugs. I'll tell you that, but some of them are, and they need to be in facilities that can help them out and get them off drugs, get in treatment. They don't need to be out really with, uh, the public because it's just terrible. I mean, there's needles everywhere. Uh, it seems like Sacramento is more worried about the weed thing and, uh, they have weed signs everywhere. No smoke weed here. Or you can't blah, blah, blah within this building, but they don't have no needles or no meth pipes. And it's like, that's a big trouble cause with, with uh, a lot of people that are giving up, um, piss and crap everywhere. Downtown, you just, downtown is just looking like skid row. They built a new stadium and put a $10 million structure in front of the King's new stadium. That $10 million could have been to open up these abandoned buildings downtown all around by Cesar Chavez. There's abandoned buildings that have been there for years and I mean decades, 10 years, other buildings all around Sacramento that could be used to house people. And of course they have little rules and regulations. Well, well we need, um, we need, uh, certain laws and regulations signed and to go over them. We need to make sure it's safe, blah, blah. Yeah. You make sure it's safe, but these people need somewhere in that's warm and they need help and they need a facility and it would create more jobs to go and help, People that need to get off of uh, drugs, heroin, uh, crack, meth, uh, maybe pain, too many pain pills or some just depression. I mean, they can be getting off cigarettes. You can get off any, anything in this facility, and it creates more jobs. There's just too many abandoned buildings that people – that's sad when you have 
homeless person sleeping outside an abandoned building and they're looking wishing gosh i wish i was in here and uh you know a lot of people are on one sided on things uh and they'd be like well you know you can't tell the average person you never could oh just get a job or you need to get off welfare or all oh, these homeless bum and whoop whoop you don't know their story and you can't just get a job nowadays because you have to be employed everybody works but to be employed uh there's not enough jobs for the population hello so let's say there's a hundred and so let's say there's six hundred thousand people in Sacramento or something, and there's only one hundred thousand jobs available, and they can only hire to up to one hundred thousand people. That's two hundred thousand people. That's three hundred thousand people, basically, or four hundred thousand people that's left without a job. So how can you tell someone to get a job? And then it's like it's basically you got to have uh, you got to be liked by the manager or have a representation about yourself. You got to fit that job. They lie when they say, "Oh, we don't we don't uh, criminate uh, people or we don't." Uh, say people can't work here because they're be biased against people basically because that's a lie there's even some people that move here and they uh, take over jobs and they move their own uh race of people in from their own country and they don't hire americans and it's like we're sending back the ones that are like falling off because of this and a lot of people and you know a lot of people have them high uh class jobs and all that because they got to get the the uh, education to get the job or they came from a different background so then people give up and they just become homeless and stop caring about that and it's like right now they need the homeless is ruining the look of Sacramento, the whole image, the downtown new Kings arena. We're trying to get the all-star basketball game down here, trying to get a lot of investors down here uh, on K street. You know, they're more interested in opening up bars and instead of uh, places where people can get help or places where people can go and uh, get off the streets or a uh, gym for kids to play basketball or a swimming pool, like a sports center. It's just all drinking downtown. Sacramento loves to promote drinking for some reason, even on the news channels. And they're uh, avoiding all these other problems. And every year, it's the same thing. Every year around uh, the little debate uh, time, or we got a new governor coming in, or a new office elections, they always are on, oh, we're going to do this and that for the homeless people, and this and that, blah, blah, blah. Well, coming to you live from an uh, ex-homeless person, uh, they're not doing nothing. Uh, let's go ahead and um, listen to this segment right here, because this is going on in Sacramento, too. You can hear the cars on Garden Highway from Joanne Martin's home just north of downtown Sacramento. She admits she rarely thinks of the protection the levee offers until the water gets high. We would be underwater, I think, if it broke (laughs) at some point. Then we showed her a picture of what's happening just on the other side of the levee from her home, where a homeless camp has been cut into the side of the levee. That concerns me. And those cuts into the levee are deep. In some places, experts estimated as much as eight feet. I think that they need to be taken care of. We also showed photographs of the damage to civil engineer Chris Nudeck, who has worked on levee repair throughout the San Joaquin Valley. Could be catastrophic. And it happens a lot. But we have hundreds, if not thousands, of these throughout Sacramento, San Joaquin Valley. From uh, yeah, it's like that out there in San Joaquin Valley. You got a lot of homeless fights around, uh, a lot of deaths. People are giving up. There's people. Um, I got a, actually a special guest. He's going to uh, tell you about the people. It's like zo- walking zombies. They're going around acting um, this crazy, like rolling around in dirt, uh, yelling, screaming every single morning, hurting themselves, banging their heads against stop signs. Uh, we have a special guest right here, Tyrese. Um, what uh, what do you see going around uh, when you're downtown, like about all this homeless stuff? Pissy alleys, um, homeless people acting crazy, and it's a lot of stuff. They bang themselves on stuff. You know, it's crazy. You just gotta is be. It, ca- um, is it dangerous right now? Like, uh, how do you feel from a kid's perspective? Like, do you think second downtown's a safe area for children? Nope. Because there's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, stuff going on, we we get to deal with that every day. Um, what do you think uh, should be done about the homeless? They should be well treated and they should take medicine. That help. Yep. Well, you heard it. That's from an 11 year old uh, born uh, in Sacramento. Let's go ahead and switch to this song right now. Just uh, give us a little break, and we'll finish up on this uh, homeless agenda. A pimp to the beat, eat from the garbage on the street. Yeah, this is how I roll. Paper bag pants out of control. You can find me at the glory hole. We through the wall for a quick free blow. Uh, girl, look at my body. Uh, 
Girl, look at my body. Uh, girl, look at my body. Uh, Are you trash? Uh, please give me some money. Uh, please give me some money. Uh, please give me some money. Uh, Are you trash? When I walk in the spot, yeah, this is what they see. Okay. An old dirty man that drinks his old pee. Got a disaster in my pants, and I ain't scared to show it. Show it. Show it. Show it. Well, you guys hit sexy in a moment. Shoot. Anyways, uh, let's finish this off. Okay, basically, uh, yeah. Other people, um, this is where in 2015, it was June, I had moved away from Sacramento to Stockton. And the place in Stockton was just so dirty. And it was just filthy, full of roaches. Those roaches kicked me and my other son out the house, actually. We went and slept in a tent, and then we decided to move back to Sacramento in August. When we left, the same apartments that I was about to move back to was 500 a month. Now they were 700 a month. Criteria's changed. I thought I could get places. They wanted extra income. There was wait lists on so many apartments out here because they were just trying to overpopulate Sacramento. You don't want to overpopulate cities. That creates homelessness. So what did it do? It created homelessness with me. I was sitting there on the sh- uh, streets, on my car. I had to live here and there sometimes with my godmom and baby's mama. But most of the time I was on the streets and... Um, are in a tent and it was just i actually liked being in a tent because it's outdoors but you have to you know hide your stuff watch your stuff all the time someone had uh, broken in my tent um it's just you know for a diabetic or something for anyone there's no way to live because you don't have no i mean uh we had running water across the street but you don't have no running water really to take showers or baths and all this and that eat properly store food properly and it's just why would you if you're in charge of Sacramento, why don't you have a war on homelessness? If I was a governor or in control of anything, I would make it illegal to be homeless, which means everyone has a place. No one asks to be born. For the people that don't know how to uh, treat houses right and they cre- they start uh, fires in houses or bring roaches or bed bugs or this and that, you can have that's what I said the facilities are for. You put them in facilities, train them, get them off the drugs, or train the people that don't know how to treat houses right. And uh, so they can clean their credit. There's a lot of people with evictions that were getting places over me. A lot of people that had uh, bad comments or um, dirtied up their house. And I'm a very clean person and I was getting denied. It was just terrible. So this homelessness is a big problem in Sacramento. Uh, Go ahead and watch the news and uh, see what's going on. Next time you're around a homeless person, uh, think about what they're going through or if they gave up on life or something. I get nothing but love and respect from homeless people. They always give me and my son food or money or the thumbs up on being a good father or like to spoil my son. There is a, a lot of good uh, people that are homeless and they're, uh, they want a home. They want to pay bills. They want to work or they want to get off the streets. They want a new life. It's just that they don't know where to start from. And it's really sad right now. Uh, I just wish things were better. Uh, if any of you guys, uh, Want to hear any other subjects? You go ahead and uh, mess email me, message me or something, and we can get those going on, and I'll cover those subjects. But right now, it's just it's a whole hellhole going on in Sacramento about this homeless stuff, and nothing's really being done about that. Homeless people have even got together and got in the streets one time, and they're just sleeping right there. It's like you're telling them they can't sleep here and there, and they're sleeping in dangerous spots. It's like where are they supposed to sleep at then? Now a lot of them are um, a lot of them do bring trash around and make messes and all that. There should be a public facility where you can put storage at and they should check it in. Is this stuff dirty or is this clean and worth keeping? And they should give them free storages so they don't have to carry all their stuff around town making messes, which would make sense to you people listening right now or some maybe no one's listening. But this is how you would control that problem right now, right? Just, it, it, it costs money, but you guys make money from paper. Come on now. It don't cost your soul. It don't. It only costs some sweat and some work to get this uh, homeless taken care of. And there's so many other things uh, that homeless people need, but basically we need to start re- reconstructing these buildings, remodeling them, and having places for the homeless to live in and get off the streets because the streets is looking real bad. Ordinary in Sacramento is starting to look like downtown. Uh, this homelessness is spreading everywhere. And there's other people that are sending their homeless from Washington and Seattle throughout the past years, giving them one-way tickets to Sacramento and leaving them there and like saying, here, you take our trash. So, hey, oh, man. 14 seconds left. What should I say? What should I say? Goodbye. Thank you for tuning in to this podcast, The Real Talk Pod, brought to you by St. G. 
and little Tyrese on this episode.